What's good with y'all, man? It's your boy, Henny the Moore, reporting live from the liquor store, man. And hey, I will be joined by landlord from Alabama. I will be joined by West Coast Cowboy. So you know when the three of us get together, it is Cowboys Uncut, raw, unfiltered, and undulterated, man. And hey, I do not have the video on today, but I will be showing, you know, screens, slides, and everything else, man. But we got a bunch of, uh, bunch of talk about, man. The Dallas Cowboys have made some, uh, some nice moves finally. It wasn't adding nobody, but they did get rid of some uh, some marquee players, some some people that we grown to, to know, like, love. Some of y'all hated them, right? But, hey, the Dallas Cowboys have made some roster moves. So if you have not seen, the Dallas Cowboys have released Michael Gallup, and they have released Leighton Vanderess. So two of the marquee players of the Dallas Cowboys, two of their best prospects from the 2018 draft, have been released. So we'll talk about that in full. Uh, but on the way into the liquor store, on the way into the trap, on the way into the West Coast, y'all know the usual rules of engagement when y'all tap in with the independent content creators, man. First and foremost, when you tap in with us, the first thing we need y'all to do is hit that like button. The more likes that we get on these platforms, the more likes that we get on these videos, the more that the algorithm will work in our favor, man. So you got love for Henny, you got love for West Coast, you got love for Landlord. Make sure y'all hit that like button, man. It goes a long way. I can't even put into words how important it is, but it goes a long way into helping your independent. Sadden. Is ATM gone? Can y'all hear me? Give me a one if y'all hear me. One if you can hear me. Say you still cut out, Henny. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, y'all can hear me because I hear it on my phone. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? I don't know what's going on with Mr. ATM Sports, but uh, you know, we can't let the haters win. Shout out to everybody rocking with your boy, man. Hey, we doing a clearance. We doing a clearance sale right now. Yeah, see, hey, they, they, they didn't. They didn't get me. That was my own bag. Listen, I got oh. it. Listen, some people call it being Jerry Rig. Some folks, if you're from the ghetto, you call it nigger Rig. I got this just put together, and I forgot I can't have this phone on the charger while I try to do this show because it'll make the phone overheat because I'm doing way too much. But oh, okay, I'm I'm back now. I'm back now. You know, okay. I, was just, I was just going through the regular spiel, man. I was telling folks to hit that like button. I was telling folks to hit that share button. I was telling folks to slap the dog shit out of those Eagles <laughs> fans. And I was also telling smack, folks smack. to hit that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, every time, every time you do that, that ludicrous song just popped to the back of my mind, boy. Yeah. But um, listen, y'all already know what it is, man. We need you to support your independent content creators. We trying to be news reporters today. As soon as that news drop, we said we try to we try to get here as quickly as possible. Man, to talk listen. about all this stuff going on. That's why it's a little abrupt. Like, look, I was doing something else. He was like, "Hey, man, we need to do this." I'm like, "Hey, let's do it." Then I had to try to make sure we got out here to talk about this stuff with y'all, man. This this is important. Real Mr. Michael Gallo. You seen you have you announced what's going on? Cause some people may not know. Yeah, man. I was at work and uh, 
and the news broke. I was just getting some overtime in, so you know I rushed back here to be out good people. But yes, the Dallas Cowboys have released Michael Gallup. Michael thirteen Gallup. You know, uh he had he thirteen no, yards last year. It seemed like it. He <laughs> would no and listen, he would no longer gallop for the Dallas Cowboys, man. So hey, first and foremost, I never want to make light of, of a gentleman losing their job. You know, he lost his job right before the weekend. He cannot feel good about anything going on right now. But Michael Gallup did get released. Uh, and salute to Michael Gallup for the good years he did get the Dallas Cowboys. But listen, you know, that, that year he had those 1,100 yards and he was out there balling, looking like a, a bona fide option for the Dallas Cowboys for years to come. You know, I loved it. 2019, I thought that, I thought that was the beginning of a long and productive uh, career for Michael Gallup. And you know he got he caught the injury bug, and then he never was the same after he came back uh, from that ACL injury. You know it's hard hey. on some people. Shout out to my dog DMV in the building, man. What's happening with you, sir? Salute to DMV in on? the building, man. Shout out to the brother, boy. Yes, sir, man. Hey, we doing a clearance sale right now, man. Sometimes you you gotta cut off the fat, you understand, and keep the meat. That's what they say sometimes. So hey. This is good for us, though. It's bad for Michael Gallup, but it's good for us. I look at this as one of the dominoes that needed to fall. I look at this as something we needed to do before we can even try to discuss a free agent. You see what I'm saying? This is the way I perceive this. Michael Gallup, it opens up $9 million. HTM, I know you the money man, you the numbers man. Did Layton Van Der Esch do anything for us? Because I'm not sure about that. If I'm not mistaken, about we probably three. owe him. Huh? I think it's I think it's about three million that it cleared. I gotta go take a take a look at the exact numbers. Oh, but so I so Layton did clear us a little bit. I I believe so. Also for Michael Gallo, what I do want people to realize, like it's going to clear money, but you won't actually receive the money until June. June first, right? Yeah, like June, like June first. You won't receive the money till till June. So yes, it it eventually will clear money, but you can't actually use it until June. So. A, a theory that's floating around for some people, right? A theory that's floating around for some people. They may wait to sign Tyron Smith after the Michael Gallup money kick in so he can get his uh, his pay raise. Hey, I'm with it. I don't want 40% of my line to be new. I'm sorry. 20% like, is enough. Yes, because I ain't going to lie. I was I was willing to trade either one. So, okay, mm-hmm. let's, say for, let's, let's say, for instance, if I had to bite the bullet and just keep Tyler B. Otis. Then I would have been like, okay, maybe I'd be okay with losing Tyron. But not both, bro. It don't even matter which one you um exchanged me for. Like, I'm like, nah, I'm not doing both, bro. No. No. Dak deserves better than that, man. And like we say, of course, we could probably, hypothetically, you know, metaphorically, put people there to replace these people and everything works out fine. But what if it doesn't? You see what I'm saying? The old line is way too important to be going out for if, ands, and maybes. You see what I'm saying? You I need mean. some tangible things on your old line. And not only that, the old line is such a, a camaraderie position. You could be a great individual player and still have a bad old line. Y'all need chemistry together too. That's what really my biggest, biggest uh gripe about it. I don't want to let go 40% of my line on for the mere fact that they need chemistry to go. They need camaraderie to go. So that's why I take a lackluster Tyler B. Otis if you're going to get rid of Tyron Smith. You see what I'm saying? I would take him because I need camaraderie on my line. I need some chemistry. And if you take 40% away, you're killing us right now. I mean, hey, I hope they do get it worked out. You know, I saw where Stephen Jones said that they are still open to the prospect of bringing Tyron Smith back. You know, That's good. Man. The the initial report was it was over with. Matter of fact, shout out to my boy Numhand Neal in the building, man. Thanks shout for tapping in. Hand. He said he he slapped up two hundred thirteen Eagles fans for checking in, so he doing the Lord's work. Make yeah. sure you sanitize your stuff though, man. You know them boys <laughs> over there be eating shit. You know um, they dirty, man. Raw raw out the horse's ass. They be eating that shit. So <laughs> hey, I, I just need you to sanitize your hands before you slap anybody else. I don't want you to be known as the as the dude going around spreading E. coli. The filthy Philadelphia eaters. The, the eaters. Philadelphia eaters. Exactly. He said technical difficulties. 
somewhat like, hey, it's easier for me to run the show the way that I got it right now. I'm just gonna put it like that. Hey, we y'all just don't know. Like I say, a lot of people think this is easy. Like we just come up here and talk, right? But I promise you. We have to learn so many types of skill sets to do this stuff. <laughs> like, I'm talking about you got to be the sound guy, the video guy, the the technician. You got to be a lot of stuff when you're doing this podcast and stuff. So, man, I know some of us make it easy, make it look easy, but I promise you, it's a lot of things that can go wrong, especially when you're doing it live. So, you know, when you see a content creator up here just doing it, doing it, making it look great, you need to show them some love because I promise you it's not easy. Not easy at all. But, hey, we make it do what it do, uh, you know, because we got love for y'all. But, hey, Michael Gallup was not the only casualty award today. Like, he was not the only person that was walked into the office, t- told to turn in their playbook, pack up their locker. Leighton Vanderess got hit in the head too, man. Leighton Vanderess, the old wolf hunter. First round pick in 2018, former all pro, former pro bowler, set a rookie record with 178 tackles for the Dallas Cowboys back in the gap. See, you people people remember Leighton Van Rest from recently, but you have folks like Shannon Sharp saying he was Brian Erlack in his, in his rookie year with hmm. the way that he played, how dominant he was. And the neck injury just stayed in his way. Like it was an issue when they, when they drafted him. And, you know, it was an issue throughout his career. He never really overcame that. He had that one year, and then it was downhill from there. He also got released, and the Dallas Cowboys will be looking for a new middle linebacker unless they're going to let Eric Kendricks play that role. But, yeah, they, they will need another linebacker, at least for depth at this point. Leighton Vanderess did not pass a physical, according to Patrick Nocee Walker. So, matter of fact, here it go, right? Nope, that's not it. This is it. You know, I, I was being nosy about the Eric Kendrick contract. I knew they ain't paid that man much. But, uh, yeah. So, according to this, he he failed a physical designation. So, A, you know, so he wasn't healthy enough to play. So, he might actually go ahead and retire because, you know, uh, of that injury. If he can't pass the physical, he can't get on the team. I know this is not Cowboy news, but speaking of retirement, shout out to Aaron Donald, man. I couldn't believe Aaron Donald retired so young. Man, young. Aaron Donald played 10 years already. How old is he, though? I know he's just 30 something. He's his players that's playing way older than him. Quarterbacks. He, he done made his money. That's that man, good. that man finna be 33 years old. That's old, that's an old man to be playing the NFL in the trenches. Mm-hmm. That's, that's an old man. Hell, Fletcher Cox retired too. How old Fletcher Cox was? I bet you he was older than Aaron Donald. Probably 30. If Aaron Donald, oh, they same age, 33. Oh, for Aaron, real? Aaron, I, Aaron thought, Donald, I thought Fletcher Cox was about 35, 37. Nah, Aaron, now Fletcher Cox don't even turn 34 until then then next year. He, he just turned 33 in December. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, Aaron, yeah, Aaron Donald going to be 33 in May. So they they around the same age. It's only a couple months. So they about the same age in my book. Man, you we getting old, bro. Cause it felt like I remember when Aaron Donald just hit the lead. Everybody was going crazy. Yeah, he, he was in the same draft class as Zach Martin. Remember That's, they took remember they took over the senior bowl. People, people talking about how they matched us was, was epic and shit. And you talk and we talking about Zach Martin. You know he's still great, but he's not as great. So that's what I said, man. This this old line gonna have to be rebuilt after a while. Like we got we got a couple of new pieces. I guess you can count Terrence Steele as an, a, a a young core piece. Ah, hey, to me, I gotta wait till next year. But uh, you got Tyler Smith is 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 like the gem in that group right now. You know what I'm saying? You you don't have a left tackle or a left guard, however you want to swing that. I would sign Tyron back, but we talking about for the future. Maybe oh, you you, need you a, go. You need to use the first round picks on that off of the line. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. Now we really need to be building the line for the future. Whether I whether we keep Dak or not, like we need to build a line for whoever, whatever quarterback we get. Yeah, I, listen. I didn't want to even entertain the thought of using a first round pick on an offensive lineman, but the more that we think about it, like you said. Aaron Donald retiring really put that in into into the light for me. Like, damn, Zach Martin old as dirt. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tyron Smith may not be back. I don't know if Terrence Steele is any good. We don't have a starting center if uh, Brock Hoffman don't work out. Like that's a that's a bunch. It's like there's like four question marks on your offensive line because you you don't know how much longer Zach Barton will play. You don't know if Terrence Steele is any good at coming back from his injury. Because listen, Michael Gallo never got back to form. That's why his ass got cut. You Durr. can't just you can't just assume. He, he said they're cutting boys. <laughs> boys huh? He just came in shooting boys. Ligament they're boys. Ligaments. <laughs> He's so crazy. Shout out to Darren though, man. Ligament boys is wild. But yeah, yeah. man. So, yeah, so hey, we need don't... to be looking at Zach right now. You know what I'm saying? Praying up to the heavens that Zach can stay playing at a great level like he is. Like, we're not saying Zach is bad at all, but he's not the unmovable force like he used to be. You know what I'm right. saying? And yeah, Queen, I'm here. I'm here. I, I just got to run it like this for, for the time being. Shout out to Miss Queen in the building. Salute the Queen Cowboy. Salute to Jane Simmons, everybody. Everybody just now sliding in. We got 199 folks Shout across out to all the platforms. Whole trap. Yeah. Across and all the platforms. liquor store. And, and the, West, the Coast. West Coast. Yeah. Shout out like, to everybody. Yeah. Shout out to everybody. Make sure y'all hit that like on the way in. Make sure y'all hit that share on the way in. Make sure y'all slap an ego on the way in. And make sure y'all hit that cash up with Super Chat on the way in, too, man. Uh, I don't know if, if West or Land running any promotions right now. But I am running the last raffle that you will ever see in the liquor store while Jerry Jones is playing with us. So if you want to enter for a Dallas Cowboy jersey of the winner's choice, you can hit the cash app or the super chat. It's $5 a pop. So if you want to enter the last, cause listen, I usually send folks to the game or and all this other stuff. Jerry Jones and them is not going to get a red cent out of me until they do right by us as a as a uh, as a fan base so when they do right and sign some free agents and act like they want to win we'll, we'll do some more but this is the last one five dollars per raffle entry uh and we're going to run it all the way until april the 30th so if you want a chance to enter hit the cash app dollar sign hit it the more or hit the super chats with the super stickers absolutely absolutely but like i said i view both of these they you know it's sad to see your players go especially two players that we drafted here. But, hey, it's time. And um, like we said, it does open up a little money. Can't, can't, you can go over the cap, though, right here, or they won't allow that. You can go over the cap. So the you, long- can just, you can sign people and go over the cap, and then you know June 1st you're going to get your 12 M's back. Yeah, or you could be, a, you be, you could be smart and get a contract done with your quarterback and have even more cap space. Or you can get a contract done with your wide receiver who probably doesn't want to play on a one-year deal. He's on his fifth-year option. You get a deal done with him and get some more money, right? You can, you can restructure Trayvon Diggs. You know you're going to want him for a long time, so you'll eventually break even with that restructure. You can always restructure Terrence Steele, too. I know that's a little bit more iffy. You don't really know if you want him long-term, but you can touch his money, too. So the Dallas Cowboys can open up all the cash space in the world while we're sitting here talking about waiting and waiting and doing stuff go ahead and make some more moves the same way that you cut uh lbe and you cut michael gallup you can go ahead and just flip the switch on those contracts a lot of folks don't realize this you don't even have to talk to the players through a restructure it's just bookkeeping it's bookkeeping it's not a pay cut yeah you, you don't even have to discuss a restructure with them it's built into the contract flip the switch get the money and go and go uh get some of these cheap ass free agents that y'all want because you're really not bothering their money because they still entitled to whatever you give them you know right. what i'm saying but you just restructuring it to where it can fit your budget or what you need to do right now so exactly so yeah. if, you're, if you're supposed to make 10 million dollars on the season you still make 10 million dollars on the season i'm just probably going to give you six or eight of that in a uh in a signing bonus i'll I, I convert that to a signing bonus and we'll have the rest as your regular salary, and they're gonna fill some cap space. Right. What up yep. with you, Dan? See, I see you. Shout out, shout out to everybody rocking, man. But how y'all feeling about the moves, man? How y'all feeling about the moves? We know Jordan Lewis came back. I'm not too mad about that. I didn't talk about that um, on my show yet, but you know, Jordan Lewis played decently on the back end of the season. No, I think like middle towards the end, and then he kind of right. He kind of got a little worse at the end, end though. He had you know? his two highest graded games of the season at the at the back end. 
Oh, okay, okay. So what he did in the playoff game, though? What did anybody do in the playoff game? <laughs> the whole defense was terrible. But, yeah, um, Jordan Lewis surprised me with his play, too, though. But I, I believe this was an either-or type deal, though. That's what that's the only thing I don't like about it. So saying that you signing Jordan Lewis back, which I'm sure was very cheap, is basically saying, hey, we ain't got time for uh, Stephon Gilmore. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That says that says we can't have either or in that in that regard. We just gotta. I mean, we gotta choose either or. So I would have definitely cho chose Gilly over Jordan Lewis, though. So, but yeah. we know, but we know the Joneses are doing what? Being penny, cheap. Yeah, I'm gonna say penny pension. Being they, cheap. They are so penny They gonna pension. always pick the very cheap. Uh, option over the normal cheap option. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They, they just don't understand that I know it's toilet paper that costs a dollar. We know that. But <laughs> pun intended. But you probably shouldn't buy that kind. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you probably shouldn't. No. Yeah, you probably know, shouldn't at all. It's going to be a, 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 a shitty situation <laughs> going <laughs> on. <laughs> This man said a shitty situation. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Just because it's it's possible don't mean you're supposed to do that. Like, we know a dollar toilet is not good for you, man. Do better. Do better, Jerry. Say something, Wes. Yeah, that fly came to you. What's up, what's up, what's up? Nothing much, man. What you got going? Chili Willie. All right, man, well, look. I'm sitting up here at my, you... at, my, at my kid's school. Wayne. Look, even when you ain't got no money, you ain't finna buy no dollar toilet tissue. I promise you that. Hope oh, not. Facts. Well, <laughs> uh, hey, Wiz, let me let me get your thoughts your thoughts on the Michael Gallup and Lady Van Derest releases, man. Uh, I think they were good. I mean, bruh, I mean, it should have neither one of them should have got an extension, bruh. Like, I mean, Amari Cooper didn't Amari Cooper didn't make it, but a, but, a, but Michael Gallup did. Jalen Smith didn't make it, but Leighton Van Derest did. Like, bro, come on, man. Like, that's that's my thoughts on this a series. I mean, I mean, you know, my I I I was so adamant on the Cowboys not re-signing Michael Gallup. I was so adamant on the Cowboys not re-signing Leighton Vanderish, and then they did. You know what I'm saying? And then it, you know, to me, I'm just happy it's over, bro. Like, shout out to Michael Gallup, but I mean, you know, I just think that Michael Gallup knows what he is, and I'm not knocking him for taking the money, you know, because you always gonna take the money. But, you know, I knocked the Cowboy fans because the Cowboy fans are, I know they believe, I know they know who they are, but Cowboy fans are the ones who blew these guys up to make them believe that they were, they were something that they weren't. You know what I'm saying? And it's just crazy how, you know, who gets contracts in Dallas and who don't. I mean, hey, I will say this. There was absolutely no reason to give Michael Gallup a contract at the time. The man had just gotten hurt. That that man could even, could even walk a run, and you gave him a, gave him all that money, and gave him over sixty million dollars, and he theoretically couldn't walk at the time. Don't be like that, him. I'm just being I'm just being realistic, bro. I'm that just a man can not walk. Come on, he, man. He, no, he couldn't. He had just tore his ACL. I'm just saying though. Like he, no, for real, like he had just. You saying like he would never walk again though? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm saying I'm, I'm just saying like the man tore his ACL, and you had a completely healthy Amore Cooper on your team. Who went and restructured after the moment you traded him away? He he was still in the plane on the way to uh to Cleveland. He restructured his deal. He didn't even meet these people yet. And he restructured his deal for them. So Think you know he, he, you know he would have restructured for you then. Exactly. Think about this. What what is that telling you? That's the results of thinking cheap. They always think cheap, bro. Everything circles back to them thinking cheap. Everything. Oh, yeah. why would I pay Mario <laughs> Cooper all this money? When I could pay Michael Gallup this little money, hmm, which one makes the most sense? They always trying to finesse, man. They got to just realize that some things in life, you just got to pay for it, bro. You just got to pay for it. Yeah, and so, I mean, that's just what everybody else pay for it. I mean, this is, the, this is the NFL. I mean, this is the professional leagues, man. Like, you got to handle professional league problems with professionals. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I just think the Cowboys just – I think the Cowboys – they put they put the faith in the wrong guys, man. Like they always put the faith in the in the guy to to try to be great instead of putting the faith in a guy who is great to just stay great. Like you wanted a you wanted 
Yeah, you wanted to you wanted Amari you wanted Michael Gallup to be Amari Cooper instead of just paying Amari Cooper to be Amari Cooper. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that didn't make no sense to me. You know what I'm saying? Hey, and Goose, he said Dak was hurt when he got his bag. And you know the difference between Dak and Amari and uh, and, and Michael Gallup? They they didn't have Dak a was a good quarterback. <laughs> Dak was on, a good quarterback. On, what are you talking on, about? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got it. the difference between Michael Gallup. And Dak Prescott is first and foremost, they didn't even have a choice but to sign Dak Prescott. They just seen three, four different quarterbacks try to play for them and get annihilated. Y'all forget, we saw uh, Ben DiNucci out there looking awful. We saw uh, Red Rifle out there looking awful. We seen the arena, arena league guy looking awful, right? You had no choice but to re-sign Dak Prescott, who should have already had a contract before he got hurt any damn way. Michael Gallo, you had options. You didn't have to give him a contract. You could have let him walk, test free agency, kept Amari Cooper, and by the time Michael Gallup tested free agency, found out that he wasn't worth a quarter, you probably could have still signed him back at a much cheaper deal and kept all of them. <laughs> like, who, hey, Wes, who else was going to give Michael Gallup a damn contract? With, uh, Nobody. Exactly. Exactly. Nobody was going to get that man $60 million at that time. Come on now. And that's, the, and that's really the main difference. Like there was, there would have been a market value and everything else for Dak Prescott, and there would not have been for that boy. So yeah, that, that's the difference. He said Arena League dude was low key better than uh, Andy and Danucci. Man, he threw the ball better, but he missed so many reads. They left C.D. Lamb covered by T.J. Watt multiple times, and he would he wouldn't even throw the man the ball. C.D. Lamb should have had like three hundred yards that that damn game. They had T.J. Watt in coverage against C.D. Lamb, and he still refused to throw that man the ball the whole game. That's that's really the reason why he didn't get back in there again. He he didn't see he didn't see the field field all that well. Man, y'all know good and well, Dollar Bill ain't paying them country boys nothing. Y'all know that. I mean, hey, I, I got the list of all the remaining free agents right here, and this is a bunch of dumpster juice. I mean, I, I'm not trying to say it like that, but these this is the last of the Mohegans. So, hey, what what we need? We need another linebacker, and we need the, uh, defensive tackles. Well, this is the defensive tackles. I'll read the list to you. Are there any names that you give a damn about? Calais Campbell. That sounds like a good name, but I'm pretty sure this man 40. What is Thomas looking like last year, though? Let me see. Because he we been posed to got him, and he been balling ever since. But uh, I don't know about last year, though. This man, damn. He Lance is Campbell, 57 years Lance old. Lance Campbell still went crazy. I'm telling you, bro, that man been balling, bro. Even though he old, he be balling. So, hey. Hey, Wes, 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 listen to this. This man has seven sacks as a defensive tackle, 36 solo tackles, 11 assists. He, he was an 80 overall, was an 80 against the run, and a 68 as a pass rusher. That's dirty man work. And this man been That's playing. That's dirty man work. That man been, this man been playing since 2008, dog. Uh, Silver. Yeah, that's dirty man work. Surfer, where you sent it at? I'm <laughs> up. I just looked on now. I don't, I don't see nothing. So make sure you. Uh, what happened? He asked me, did I get a, a donation? But I don't see nothing. Hey, what is this when, diagram? When was, oh, that's when was it? Today? Maybe you're talking about another day, because I don't see that. But uh yeah. It's it's like hey, Calais Campbell man, that, that kind of rolls my eyebrows. I'm sorry. I don't care how old he is if he playing like that. Yeah, that's I mean, some guys got it, man. Some guys I mean I mean I'm pretty sure it was uh, I'm pretty sure he was used situationally. That's why his, his percentages are probably really high. But shoot, I don't care, bruh. Like I don't need him to get. I wouldn't even need sacks from Calais Campbell. I would need the. I would need the run. I would give me the eighty. If you, the eighty. For, listen to me. When you could have just said the eighty percent on the run stop, and I'm and everything else is extra for me. Mm-hmm. But you do need to. You are gonna have to replace some sacks because you lost Dante Fowler. He had like six sacks. You lost. Don, you also lost uh, Dorrance Armstrong, who was a cleanup man for Micah Micah Parsons. Uh, who he had like nine. You know what I'm saying? So that's sixteen sacks. I'm happy my dude got paid too. That means I should be getting a little. I should be getting a little gift in the mail too. Ooh. And I seen that rumor, but you know, 
I, I, I'll, I'll shit that rumor of West Coast getting a little gift in the mail. You heard that rumor of West Coast getting a little gift in the mail. Yeah, nah, you I heard that? Nah, because listen, I knew you were gonna get something in the mail. I would have been done, had my hand out to your ass. Zay, but, man, uh, <laughs> hey, listen, Zay. This, hey, I'm gonna tell you this the last time one of my homeboys signed a big contract, all I'm gonna say is he hooked the boy up. That's all I'm gonna say. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? All I'm gonna say, tuck mine in. So there are two rumors. I, I, I'll get back to these list of free agents, but there's two rumors. There's a unbelievable rumor that Stefan Diggs might be getting traded to Dallas, which I do not believe. And then there's a rumor that, you know, Ezekiel Elliott may be on his way back into the building. So of those two rumors, I ain't going to ask you which one is most likely. We know how cheap these motherfuckers is. I know which one is most likely. But of the Ezekiel Elliott rumor, how would you feel about bringing Zeke back and pairing him with like a Trey Benson or pairing him with a Jalen Wright? Garoppolo I don't know the them Rams. dudes. Huh? I don't know them Garoppolo dudes' names. Like, the Rams. Oh. I don't know them dudes well as well as you do, so I can't say about pairing them up with anybody. But I just know how Zeke would be as an individual. I mean, if you paired them with the paired them up with the dudes, uh, with the. <laughs> Um, if I pair them up with the dudes we have right now on the team with Malik Davis, I mean, I think Zeke and Malik Davis or even I, honestly, I think Zeke and Rico Dow is a better combination than Zeke. I mean, than Tony Pollard and Rico Dow. I'm trying to see what y'all see this rumor. I ain't seen nothing of the sort. And what, who is the source? The trip is a trust me guy kind of source. So like, that's why I said it's a rumor. The Ezekiel Elliott thing has more legs, has way more legs than that. I mean, Ezekiel Elliott, just, it also makes sense, too. So The trade for the Bills, it doesn't really make sense for the Bills because if the Bills get rid of Stephon, if they get rid of Gilmore, I mean, if they get rid of uh, Diggs, they don't, I mean, you're drafting a wide receiver number, you would have to be drafting a receiver in the top in the draft. If I'm not mistaken, they're drafting, they're about, they're drafting about as far back as us. The, um, you're not gonna replace. You're not gonna replace Diggs with with anything at like 26 or whatever you think you are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's they, that's they not gonna happen. I think they pick a Yeah, they're not gonna. That this is not the year to your draft for them. This is not a draft. When you're picking this late, your draft picks are not even supposed to start, bro. Like, there's a reason why you're picking late is because you're a good team. Like, you know what I mean? Like teams who pick late, your rookies shouldn't be playing because you should have starters. That's what prevent them. Now, when you when you pick early, your your rookie's got to play. Why? Because you probably ain't even got that position, or you got to fill that position. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I say, I I Diggs, it don't matter who it makes sense for though with him, because it look like he's trying to be a problem. Like he's trying to make himself leave. So, I mean, at that point, you just gonna want the guy off your team. But I'm gonna tell you this right here. Not really. No, and I'm not trying to be racial, but now when the, now and I, I don't mean to say this in a racial way, but not when it comes to these white folks, bro. Nah, that's not that's not how it works. That's not even how it works. They they're not gonna just they're not we're not you know you know you know the ultimate white man say you know that's the president of the United States no matter what color he is. He says we do not negotiate with terrorists. Bro, what is you talking about? We do not negotiate with terrorists. We'll accidentally blow down the whole building up and just lose everybody, including the little kids and the terrorists, before it's known to know that we negotiate with terrorists. Because I'm going to tell you, when you negotiate with one, you got to negotiate with them all. You know what I'm saying? So, no. If 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 Diggs didn't, because you got to remember, these, this isn't, these contracts for the NFL are actually more clad than the NBA contracts. You don't know why? Because in the NFL, you really can only play for like eight years. In the NBA, bro, you can play like 20 years. You know what I mean? You can play like 20 years in the NBA. So that's also something that weighs on an NFL pl pl uh, player's mind is like, I don't have, in the, N in the NBA, the older you get, almost like the better you're getting. In the NFL, the older you're getting, the they're, they're trying to feed you out and replace you with young guys. You know what I mean? The NBA, they tried to replace it with young guys, and guess what? It was trash. That's why they said, no, nah, we need all you guys to go to college at least one year. You know what I'm saying? At least one year. You know what I'm saying? But the NFL is different. You know what I'm saying? So that's why, you know what I mean? That's why, you know, I mean, if if I'm if I'm if I'm one of these, if I'm one of these young guys, bro, I, I know I'm viewing it. I, I know I'm definitely viewing it differently. I agree with that. So hey man. 
Let's talk about some of these free agents on this list. Who, hey, like you said, Calais Campbell ain't got to be an every down defensive tackle. Like, real shit. Like, he ain't got to be on the field on third downs if he helped me stop the uh, run on first and second. It Man, should that, be third and long. It should be third and long been, by the time. That, that boy been hooping. And he oh, been crazy. old. He been old. <laughs> he been old as hell. So, let's talk about Sebastian Joseph Day. That's a, that's a name that, that's been floating around for a minute. He a free agent. Joseph, hold on, let me type this man's name. All right, let me see how he graded out. Sebastian Joseph Day, uh, 6'4", 310 pounds. Uh, didn't really have great numbers. Had three sacks. Didn't grade out well against the run. So I don't know. But oh, you I, got, did- I got the $5 cash out, Mark. Appreciate that, Mr. Surfer, I believe. Indeed. So yeah, man. So uh but you also can't just take that at face value because remember Jonathan Haken didn't grade out good against the run either. But when we had him on the field, it was like a damn near yard difference. So you can't always just take that at face value. True. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm I'm just happy the Cowboys got L V E up out of here, man. I'm happy. I'm also happy they got Michael Gallup out of here because those are y'all wish upon a star players. Like those players have not been good. They have not been the player that you guys have thought they would have been for a couple years now. And play people, Cowboy fans have just been wishing on a star, wishing on a star. And it mess irritates me, bro. It irritates me because you have a guy like, like you fans were so quick to turn on Zeke, but then you got fans up here dropping highlights, talking about whoever lost, whoever gets Michael Gallup's going to get a good number two. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're going to get a guy who can't beat separation, who can jump at the last minute and get a jump, a high point ball. But let's just be real. How many of those are you really throwing in today's NFL? Slap yourself. To Michael Gallup. Like slap. Slap your st- Exactly. <laughs> Why you got to say it like that? I'm just saying, if you are going to throw a ball <laughs> like that, more than likely he's not going to be the dude you're throwing. Why you got to say it like that, though? That's what made it funny. That's what made it even funnier. He's like to Michael Gallup. But I'm just saying, like he he's not the prototypical jump ball guy. He's not all that fast. He doesn't have that big of a catch radius. You know, I would understand if he was dead. Brian, it's like he has an extreme amount of luck. He has an extreme amount of luck. Because they'd be like, "Did you see what he did to Jalen Ramsey?" I'm like, "Yeah, he did it once, bro. Like everybody can get somebody once, bro." Like my homeboy got Deion Sanders, caught him slipping one time when Deion Sanders played for the Deion Sanders. I don't know if y'all remember, but he played for the Washington Redskins for a little bit. My boy RJ Sauer, he was the 18th pick overall for the Jacksonville Jaguars coming out of USC. He got a touchdown on Deion Sanders. You probably don't even remember RJ Sauer, but he remembered that touchdown he got on Deion Sanders, though. <laughs> Man, I really don't know why I might say Michael Gallup a ball if he go to KC. <laughs> if he go to KC, bro, they already got a. They guys. already got a. They already got a. Uh, they just got the uh, the one dude. Hollywood Brown. Yeah, they got Hollywood. Another yeah, fast said. dude going to Kansas City. Yeah. Hey, what about Linval Joseph? He got anything in the tank? Let me see. But Linval Joseph, he he sort of old as hell too, ain't he? All these dudes old, looking for one year deals. Right up, Stephen Jones Allen. Yeah, Linval Joseph been in the league since 2010. And he graded, he, and he failed at everything. He failed. Wait a life. minute. Wait a minute, Hen. Wait a minute. 38.8 He overall, did what? 31 run defense, 53.2 <laughs> pass defense. I said this man failed at everything in I life. Mean, wow. I'm just saying. It doesn't look. He, he said, J, he said, MG13 can't run a curve route. Ask that. I mean, that, that pick was sort of on him being lazy as hell, trying to come back for the ball, but you know. Nobody want to talk about that. It's the details in the route for me. Always the details. Uh, that's why I hate the Dallas. Listen, that's why I hate the Dallas Cowboys always wait so damn late to try and sign free agents because the 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 people that that be left over that need to help us fix these issues don't be that damn good. That can actually give. I mean, you know, actual difference makers. They gone. That's what I'm saying. Like DJ Reader was top 10 and stopping the run last year at the defensive tackle position. The Dallas Cowboys needed to stop the run. Did they think about signing DJ Reader? No. Now they the did. best player available available is Carson Wentz. That thanks a lot, Cowboys. Man. <laughs> <laughs> it's sad. You know you waited too late, bro. 
Like, what and are we doing? You, are, you must not have watched the show if you think I'm just now saying something about Michael Gallup. I've been talking about Michael Gallup for years at this point. I had to, I had to, uh, good hey, I hate, you know, he hey, you know what guy. I hate? I hate those fans that are going to be like, yeah, but you guys were all up. No, we was not. No, we was not. Before you say we or y'all, you need to go check them receipts. No, I was not. I was never for Michael Gallup getting signed. I'm going to be honest with you. Two people that I made that I look, listen to me, two people that I said the Cowboys should have traded Michael Gallup and Doris Armstrong. I remember specifically making videos on trading Michael Gallup and Doris Armstrong. I even tweeted 103 to fan and Mike Fisher about trading Doris Armstrong and how good it was an idea. And Mike, Mike Fisher told me, no, hell no, that's a dumb idea. Where I, my Doris Armstrong is going to help me hoist a trophy in January. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah you're trophy, right. Trophy never happened, and you let him walk for absolutely nothing. Free. Free. Same with Michael I was Gallo. with you as soon as you said that, too. Shout out yeah. to Donald Holmes with the um, $10 cash out, man. We appreciate you. Salute to Dono, man. Hey, salute to Dunno on my end too, man, with the ten uh ten dollar cash out, man. Appreciate you for the love and support, my boy. And, hey, Dunno, that got you two raffle entries too, my boy. Yeah, I really do think that uh we we should have we should have really we really waited too late for a lot of this stuff, man. Let's go. We really yeah. did. And now, now it's like we we hoping in a prayer. Like now, look, this is what the Johns need to realize too. You scared to take a risk, right? But at the same time, if you take a bigger risk, your chances of success might be a little better. You taking your chances of success with these dudes. What's up, sir? Do you see how drastically your 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 chances of success drop with these kind of guys? Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, but, you you rather but that, take little risks like this as opposed to actually taking a real risk on a player that you actually believe in. But okay. Yeah, but I'm actually but I'm gonna ask you this, man. I'm gonna tell you this right now. Like, if I'm Jerry Jones, I'm Jerry Jones, right? I'm Jerry Jones in the red shirt, right? Mm-hmm. There is no way two country dudes with 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 with, with long braid hair. Braided hair, because you know he ain't gonna call it dreadlock. Long braided hair and hats gonna tell me I'm not successful and ain't took a a, a, a team that was worth 1.6 million and now they're worth 17 billion dollars in the number one franchise in all the world. You, you sir, you sir, you sir, all three of us who got to get our ass up every day and go to work or else our bills is not gonna get paid. How are we gonna tell? Look at Jerry Jones and tell him who has built the largest in the best, most profitable business in the world. Think about this. Jerry Jones's business is he almost sell. I don't want to say this out loud because my kids is in here, but he almost selling that. No, it almost feel like he's selling. No, because don't is the only thing, no matter if the hood is broke or got money, it's going to sell. You want to know why? Because there's a level of addiction. Well, it's not. They're addicted to the product. Can I say this West Coast? Listen to me. The Cowboys ain't got to win a game if the Cowboys listen to me. If you go look at the top 100 uh, ESPN, the top 100 primetime games of all time, Cowboys got like 60 of them, bro. It's ridiculous, bro. And listen. And we ain't been we ain't been we, we ain't been winning games like that. Listen. That is why go ahead. Jerry Jones, the businessman, <laughs> is the worst enemy of Jerry Jones that you have. Yeah. Because the thing that he does to be a successful businessman contradict everything that holds true for being a good general manager. Wow. Good job. Because if you're a good businessman, you want to buy low and sell high. That's what, that's what you want to do. You want to get, you want to okay. take the, the least amount, spend the least amount of money, and make the most money out of that. And when you're a general manager, you got to spend money. You got to you got to spend. You got you got to spend on on the big free agents to make an impact and win games. Now listen, it may not have all, always led to championships, but every team that has spent the most money in free agency for the last almost decade has won at least three more games than they did last year. And when you're just, and when you're a team that won twelve games, those extra three games mean you you caught you put could have probably had to add some Super Bowl. But because the Dallas Cowboys are so goddamn cheap, they'll never get that. They you remember Moneyball and how people loved the Moneyball movie. And it, and, I, and it won these awards and shit. You forget, y- y- the A's didn't win no championship. The A's never won playing that Moneyball shit. 
I'm just tripping out for uh, like, like you said, I, if it's all about the money and the attention, I mean, think about this. We get money and attention right now, but think about if we was actually winning, if we was actually making big time moves, if let's say, Man, Lord. Like, wait a minute, we are, this, we are listen. winning. No, stop, stop. We are winning 12. You got to be specific because that's exactly, listen to me. Of that is the, that's ex- games. I'm talking about but, playoff games. Of course. Yes, but that's, but listen titles. to me. Listen, I'm not I'm not giving you for pushback. All I'm asking you to do is be more specific because I'm going to tell you this right now. That what you're doing right now is exactly what the Joneses are doing. Bro, we are winning games. What are y'all talking about? We won 12 games. We have 36 wins in the last three years. What are you talking about? We don't win games. Steven Jones We're the number one on the interview and said, we know we, we're a 12-win team, but we got to win in the playoffs. They know that. Exactly, know exactly. That. But that's but this is this is what I'm saying though. If, if listen to me, you don't hear Kansas City talking about winning 12 games. Exactly. You don't hear that. But at the same time, this is what I'm gonna ask you guys too, and I asked you guys this before. If Jerry Jones could trade out the Kansas City Chiefs winning success and their and their and their bank account over the last 10 years versus the Cowboys, no Super Bowls and bank account. Bro, they're gonna pick the they're gonna pick the Cowboys, bro. That's the reason. Because we think need about this. Up out of here. <laughs> but listen to me. Listen to me. But listen to me. Hey, 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 and listen to me. I'm not trying to say I agree with Jerry Jones. I'm just saying I understand where he comes from. In business, this is what Jerry Jones is thinking. It's not even realistic for me to win the Super Bowl every single year. So why not just put out a good product and just try? That's what they do, bro. See, you ain't let me because finish the, my statement. Hold on. I was getting that if we was making all of these moves kind of like what you see from Philly, just imagine if our offseason was like that, bro. Everybody would be going crazy about the Cowboys right now. We would be literally going crazy. If you want a nice offseason, or, no, not, not like we would have been. If that was the Cowboys offseason, what the Eagles just did, bro. It'll be we'll be the topic of discussion all show. We the topic of discussion anyway, but they wouldn't talk about nothing else. <laughs> like everybody else would be backburner. Landlord, they wouldn't even get landlord. Discussed. I'm gonna be honest with you, but I don't see the difference, bro. <laughs> I don't. I don't think there'll be any difference, bro. The Cowboys, you can't be on more TV than what it is unless they're just gonna char- change ESPN to DC4L or something like that. They you know might. They, they would do. It. They would. If, do we, it. if we sign Saquon Barkley, they might do that. And then they can talk more about Zach don't get it done this year. What does it say about his man? You feet? know how many <laughs> bro, look at all the moves they made, bro. If that was our offseason, bro, they would they wouldn't get to the other teams. They probably give us a couple of days, like, okay, we talking about cowboy. They did this, 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 and this. Then tomorrow we're gonna talk about the rest of the NFL. <laughs> like they'll have to do something like that. Like they would literally cover all of that. Like, no lie. And be real, you you're giving them too much credit. You said five. They only have four playoff wins in no 30 years, by the way. And we talking Shit. about winning. <laughs> we can't say that. <laughs> you really can't say that at that point. And then I know we got five. That was a that was a, a, a that's one of the highest ones. But now people that caught us, people that tied up with us, Answer. people that got more than us. Like it's it's not but my, sustainable hey, after a while. Listen, I, hey, listen, man. I know I be saying some stuff that take a minute to sit sit down on you, man. But bro, I'm I'm telling you. The reason why I think Jerry Jones wants to win a Super Bowl, is, but at the same time, I think they feel and I because bro, you 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 win more in the chase than you actually do in the prize, man. It's just like COVID was the biggest thing in the world until what? Until a shot came out and you and I, and no, nobody was scared of it no more. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like nobody was scared of it no more. Now you just you can cough on somebody and they ain't tripping. You know what I mean? <laughs> So that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, fellas. Like, but imagine how much money was made in just looking for a cure. How much money? And guess what? That money's not. And I'm. And listen, I'm not saying that I don't believe that Jerry Jones and the Joneses are all about money. No, I don't believe that. I do believe they do want to have a good product. I do believe because, bro, you it costs. It does cost that. Listen to me. It does cost to have 12 wins because we could be cheaper. We could definitely go cheaper and not have 12 wins. So I so I do believe that they do want to win, but I also believe just like at everybody every man's house, 
there there's a way that they want things to be done and there's a way that they don't want things to be done and i'm gonna be honest with you man like i also think that we need to stop we need to really pin the tail on the real devil here man jerry jones a lot of this stuff that that be happening does not this ain't jerry jones stuff bro jerry jones is an older man who instills hope jerry jones is not out here clipping wings that's not him bro remember jerry jones took two weeks to release des bryant even though we knew des was released it took him two weeks to physically tell him you know what i mean so that's what i'm saying like we need to stop like where is Stephen Jones? Because I'm going to tell you, bro, we all, as soon as Jerry Jones go up to the pie in the sky or he go on and retire, bro, listen to me. We're going to be in for a rude awakening. We're going to be in for a rude awakening, bro. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, we're going to be in for a rude awakening. And I'm telling you, this stuff, all this stuff that we doing makes us better business-wise. Have you noticed we haven't done anything really that makes us worse as a business? We've done things that have made us worse as a team, but we haven't really done any. Hold on, let me park it. Let me repark it. We haven't really done anything that makes us worse as a business. Bro, every business decision they make, bro, it works like gold. It works like is, gold, bro. This, this something Don't I open that door until my car stops. This is something I think we miss, missing, though. You know, they say put your first thing first. Like other teams, they don't have that luxury to say, oh, we're just a money making machine. So guess what they have to do? Put football first because the football and the success of the football team is what gives them the money. You see what I'm saying? So like the Dallas Cowboys get money regardless. So now they got a luxury to just, hey, we don't got to win. We can just get money. If the Chiefs start winning today, if Patrick Mahomes retire next year, the Chiefs will not be talked about again. <laughs> like real nope. talk. You, you will nope. never hear from them ever again. Nope. That's the hey, let Yep. Look, yep. that's the difference. If 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 the we just seen it, the Patriots dominated football for ten years, and once they got done, we like ah, oh, we done with the Patriots. We don't care nothing about them at all. So this is bro, this we is had the Patriot point. fans in California. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is the difference, though. The Cowboys don't have to like it's not a necessity for the Cowboys to perform football wise. That's a problem. Everybody else' yep. business is centered around football. Ours yep. is not. You just painted that picture, and I and it makes sense business wise, but that's really what's hindering this team from football success. You see what I'm saying? Like yes, it's about but think about football it. though. But guess what? But but landlord though, think about this though. In business, there is no championship. There is no ring. Guess what? In business, you ain't even gotta be the best. You just listen to me. If you're the top five soda in the world. Bro, you're a billionaire. If you're the top eight shoe company in the world, you're a billionaire. That's the mindset that they're they're thinking on. Because only in sports is there actual an actual peak of the mountain. In business, guess what? You can be Coca-Cola, I can be Pepsi. We all won this year. They drank all of it. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> so they drank yeah. all this year. Hey, so they drank all weird. of it. For the 199 for your mind, hit somebody with it. Was it yeah. on your end? Yeah, on my end. Appreciate you, people. But listen to me. Hold this on, is listen to me. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on man. Let, let, let me get this. Let me get this on super chat, man. He said when Steph retired, we won't care about Golden State either at all. Shit, that's the point. Go at ahead. all. That's no, I was saying. just saying. They, I call they business is centered around the success of the team. That's all I want to say. Go ahead with. No, I was just going to say, I coined this, man, and I've been saying this for a very, very long time. Jerry Jones has figured out the ultimate coup de grace in sports, in business, period. And that is how you can have a product, and regardless of the performance of that product, it still sells. There's only two things that I know that sells like that. One, Coochie. dope. <laughs> Actually... Throw throw a third one. I know three now because my cousin. Man, I don't even know. I don't even know how that slipped my mind, bro. I, I was like, man, come on. Dope, man. coochie, and the Dallas Cowboys, bro. It doesn't matter <laughs> if it's cold. It doesn't matter if it's wet. And think about this: if you got fifty dollars to your name, you know what you're gonna do? You're gonna go get. You gonna go. Hey, man, we just gonna eat oodles and noodles. But I'm about to go get this. I'm gonna go hit this. You know what I'm saying. Guess what? Some of y'all, some of you listen to me. Some of y'all on free. Some of y'all gonna get paid on Friday. Your rent gonna be due on Saturday. 
You gonna say, you know what? The office gonna be closed till Monday. I'm going to the game Sunday, and I'll figure it out on Monday. We do that, bruh. Listen to me. Most a lot of us is gonna disagree with every move that the Cowboys make. And you know what we're gonna be? I'll be work week one. I'll be here in the stands. <laughs> <laughs> one of them. Hey, I'm one of them. Don't get mad. I'm one of them. I, I am one of those delusional ass cowboy fans. Like I'm coming out with a new brand, and the brand is called a delusional. A, a delusion. I am a delusional ass cowboy fan. Because I'm gonna tell you this right now. If you're a rational cowboy fan, you would have jumped off a boat a long time ago. Rational people are not cowboy fans. You can't be, bro. There's no way to be rational and be a cowboy fan. You gotta be a little crazy. You know what I'm saying? Just like yeah, we say. This team just like is we say, crazy because I but am think about this. Most we, irrational and it and it's miserable every day. <laughs> so but think, about, but but landlord, but landlord, think about this. I'm gonna keep it real. You just you more crazy. You, I'm not saying you, but I'm saying us. We are more crazier than everybody. You want to know why? Because we actually watch film. We actually break down content. We are actually studying these guys. And let's just be real. True. We're at the point now. I don't have to ha listen. Unfortunately, family. I don't have to watch the Cowboys watch play games for me to see, to know if they're going to be good this year. And you know what I'm still going to do? You know what I'm still going to do? I'm buying tickets like a mug. I already bought jerseys like a mug. I bought some, some, I bought some new Jordan Flints. I just brought, I got two pair of them because I wanted a fresh pair for this season. And I got a pair that I just run through. You know what I'm saying? I got every Cowboy t-shirt you can imagine. Um, now I'm at the point where I just go on eBay and I just buy everything on Cowboy. Like, listen to me. Listen, the more the it be, like, listen to me. The more I be like I'm done with the Cowboys, the more when I they ain't looking, I be buying it, bruh. Like I'm a I'm a cowboy head, bruh. Let's just be just put it in the comment box. You if you a cowboy head and you be needing your cowboy fix, and listen to me, you don't give a damn how I feel. You don't care. You know it's going to have you running down the street at 3 o'clock in the morning acting crazy with one shoe on and a blanket on your head. You know it. That's, that's, the, that's the life what? of a cowboy fan. Thank you, landlord. But guess what? Listen, landlord went to that Tennessee. What was that? I think you went to a game we lost, right? We went to a game yeah, we, we lost, won. right? We won. We won. We won. Well, we won. But it, the Tennessee game. But I forget. I remember you was telling me that story. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro. Like, it's, you know what I'm saying? Like. It, you still either way, bro. Like it's those are the three things, and it's very controlling. And then Jerry, and the cool thing about Jerry is Jerry being a smart cowboy dealer, because that's what he is. He deals in cowboys, bro. He understands that we hooked, bro. Like we some cowboy heads, bro. Yeah, that's like, true. we are cowboyed out, bro. <laughs> we are cowboy heads. Listen, you. We not disagreeing with that you saying we understand the reason why they do the business route. We understand that we all crazy cowboy fans. We understand that. But listen, my my point is if the organization realizes this too, we have the most loyal fan base of all time. We have the craziest, the most rowdiest fans of all time. If we got all of that, why don't you take care of us, bro? <laughs> like that's what we that's what that's what my gripe is. Like, bro, we do the most. We the ones helping you become the richest franchise ever all the time. Like, don't you think we deserve a little payback? And all we are as fans is asking, hey, do something to make us feel better, like Players Club and stuff. Go win some big games, bro. Go go, go actually act like you care about winning or going to the Super Bowl. Hey, landlord. Can, can, I, can I say hey, land, Wait, wait, wait. Hey, can I do this real quick? Can we, I? Don't, we don't even be asking – for the most expensive dude on the block. We didn't ask y'all hey, and, and get the most expensive guys. We asked for a damn linebacker and a defensive tackle. He gave him hey, half linebacker. Hey, what? can I do something real quick? Hey, landlord, can I do something real quick? Hold on, hold on. Hey, Chicago. <laughs> do something to make me feel better. That's why we won't, bro. That's why we won't, bro. Like, listen. Not, not hey, you, you, hey, you, you got to know what that, that, that window roll up, though. That window yeah. roll up. You know what that window roll up, though. Man, just think about this. Okay, you on a, you on a, you on a double couple trip. You know what I'm saying? Y'all went out. You were, you and your homeboy girl and you and your girl. And they just buying every goddamn thing. <laughs> like, you look, look, you know you ain't got it like that, but you like, God damn, we can't just... You know what I'm saying? After a while, your girl gonna be like, Shh, 
I mean, we can't we can't buy one item, nigga. Like it, <laughs> after a while, it's like, bro, you can't just sit up and watch all of that, bro. It's it get bad after a while. Like, hey, yeah. these other teams are doing everything, bro. They doing everything. Yeah, and hey, you know what? And I'm gonna tell you something, landlord. Listen to me. Y'all can miss me with this this Super Bowl crap. Listen to me, because that's not even the first goal. The first goal of an NFL season is to win your division. I'm going to tell you this right now. Go look at the, how many teams have won the Super Bowl without winning their division. It is very, 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 very hard, bro. Very, very, very. Listen, on the road. you got to you gotta win like four games on the road. <laughs> and think about this, Landlord. If you don't win your division, that means you're, and you're in the playoffs, that means you're probably not even supposed to be there. Like, I wild card teams are exactly. <laughs> yeah, wild card teams are exactly what they are. You're a wild card. That means we don't really know if you're supposed to be here or not. You know what I mean? But listen to me. That's why number one seeds, teams that get home field advantage, you're supposed to win, bruh. I'm going to tell y'all this right now. We can say whatever we want to say, but Jerry Jones, he 2024, 2023 is going to be a regret, bro. That's going to be a regret. No way you can regret having possibly two home playoff games in one game versus a team that you've already beat before to go to a Super Bowl, bro. How e Listen, Landlord, how much easier can it get? You had to play two home games and possibly Detroit to go to the Super Bowl, and you beat Detroit. Yeah. How does? How much easier does it get? Shout out to B Bird for the one ninety nine. He said he don't uh, take care of us because he don't have to, and that's the point. We keep coming back. We, we keep coming back. We now have in a abusive relationship with the Dallas Cowboys. They bust us aside the head. They steal the car. They, they do us so dirty. They done locked us outside and changed the locks, and we keep coming back. Nah, this man, look, man, this is what they did. They supposed to, <laughs> they supposed to pick us up from work, but we ended up having to get an Uber because they was gone the whole weekend. <laughs> Hell no! Nah. You didn't even get you didn't even get an Uber. You wanna know why you didn't give an Uber? You didn't even get an Uber because Jerry accidentally unlinked his card to the account. So every time you go to go to Uber, it says it says the payment is declined. And you sitting up here like, what the hell? This is Jerry Jones. How's it declined? Jerry <laughs> gonna have you hitchhiking out there. We can't even get an Uber. So like, and like he was Jerry, you like panhandling. Like so, so this is how dirty they do us, bro. Then next time you know. When you halfway home, you see Jerry passing by with somebody else in the car. <laughs> hey, I have a, I have a question for y'all. Question for y'all. If the first goal Damn, is to bro. win your division, it, if, if the first goal is to win your division, I want to know right now, have the Dallas Cowboys at least put together a team that they feel will be able to be able to defend their division title. Hey, I'm going to tell you this right now, bro. If you're trying to win us. If you're trying to win a Super Bowl without winning your division and only having to play like two games instead of having played three or four, bro, that is a lot of football, bro. I'm I mean, it. no. I, I, hold on. Absolutely I, I, not. I was going to say, how can you believe that when your team gotten worse and the other team in your division has gotten better? They got they gotten better. They went and got a Saquon Barkley. They went and got, I don't think he's the best player in the world anymore. They went and got Devin White. They went and got this and that. We we got a we got a thirty year old linebacker. We lost an all pro uh, tackle at this point. We lost a Pro Bowl center. <coughs> we we don't really have much. We have we ain't even, re, even re signed Gilly. He was your starting boundary corner. You're probably gonna have a different different looking secondary this year. I would have been happy. About no, that. you need. Hey, listen to me. You need to sign Gilly. You need to sign Gilly. You need to sign Tyron Smith. We need to stop blazing off over that. They ain't gonna sign Gilly, bro. I feel like it was either Jordan Lewis or Gilly. I don't see them signing both. And they signed Jordan Lewis. Yeah. I mean, this is my thing. The re this is this is my thing, right? Jordan, like to me, technically, and this is what I said in my video. Technically, Jordan Lewis's signing shouldn't affect Stephon Gilmore signing because they play different positions. You know what I'm saying? What should affect Stephon Gilmore's position is whatever this doctor says about Trevon Diggs's leg. Like, I'm going to keep it real with you. And if I'm the Dallas Cowboys, I'm not even saying anything. Like, if I'm I'm being nice to Gilmore until I find out what's really going on um, at with his, with, his, with his Achilles. You know what I'm saying? Because, listen, listen, listen to me. I know we like to say, oh, you tear your Achilles, you'll be back one year from today. But, bro, listen to me. On your first injury, major injury, right, it is not, it is not. And let, I don't want to have to go through. I Listen to me. I don't want. 
Trevon Diggs to go through what Michael Gallup went through. You want to know why? Because Michael Gallup ain't on the Dallas Cowboys no more. I don't want Trevon Diggs to go through what Tony Pollard went through. You want to know why? Because Tony Pollard ain't on this team. And guess what? These are after what? They tried to perform on on a, on a a after an injury. L realistically, I only want Trevon Diggs to play probably 14 regular season games for me. I am not expecting him to play week one or week two, and I'm not even asking him to play week one or week two. You want to know why? Because you have Gilmore. Why? Why? That's worth Hold paying on. for, bro. Can I say this? It, it shouldn't matter anyway. Because you're a better secondary with Trayvon Diggs, Stephon Gilmore, and Deron Bland as your starting three than the, than the other way around. So that shouldn't even affect They should have went ahead and Stephon Gilmore. Time right. out. Time out. Y'all acting like getting better is the objective, is the main goal. <laughs> like, no, saving money is the main goal. Like, have y'all forgot who we discussing here? Man, anyway, shout out to Yeah, B but Gilmore, look, Gilmore ain't going to ask for a whole he lot said, of bread, though. Hold on one second. Let me let me get B-Bird. I'm going to let you cook. B-Bird hit somebody with a 199. Might be Appreciate on West you, B-Bird. Well, then on your end again? Yeah. Uh, he said we don't that, I think somebody, upgrade, hey, somebody just hit me with 10. Somebody hit me with 10 piece. That was Donald Holmes, I'm pretty sure. We don't look to upgrade rooms. We look to maintain. I mean, we don't even maintain at this point because you're worse. You're worse. You're worse than you were. Maintaining would maintaining would be you're at the same level that you were in 2023. Like you are a worse football team as of right now than you were when the season ended. And the team that you ended with was good enough to get blown out in the first round. Bro, bro, the Cowboys supposed to be the Lannisters, bro. Like we the richest team in the world, but we behave like we low born. The Starks. Bro. We we pray we perform we like like we the Starks. Yeah, like we, we perform the Starks, like we the Starks. Bro, bro, like we, we bastards. The Lannisters, bro. Like, like we bro, the bastards. Look, look, Wes. If y'all follow the show, tell me when nobody crazier than um the the. Bro, the hey, hey, I'm you know I'm right on point. Listen, you know nobody, you know I'm on point. With the dad of uh, Lannister, he was the biggest gangster on the show for real. He was swiping everything. He was the richest and the most dangerous. Hey, Anytime it's... something happened, bro, they right, call right, him, right, right, and he gonna swipe you out. He gonna swipe you out. Shout out to JVB boy for the twenty piece on my end, man. I appreciate you for the love. Man, shout man. out to you, man. Appreciate you. Hey, shout out, BB. Hey, shout out for the twenty piece. Hey, I'm gonna tell you something too. What people understand, what also what people also don't know about Tyron Lannister too is this: even though he was probably the most evil person in the world, he was also think about this: as evil as his as evil as he was. His word was respected. Like there were times where people would get in trouble and they would just be like, yo, bro, I ain't got no money. But listen to me, Lannisters always pay their debts. Yep. And you know what people do? Give them whatever they want. His name ring bells. And look, he, his he, name he, ring bells, look, bro. <laughs> he operate like the Illuminati. Because think about it. He ain't even want to run nothing, but he was the main decision maker. Like anything happened, they go run to daddy. Like, hey, uh, when Cersei doing some crazy stuff, she like, hey, we need this daddy. He be like, well, it's time to go kill. <laughs> like, let's go, <laughs> let's go lace up and go swipe out <laughs> half the world because they playing with the Lannisters. Like, he he used to let his children go do all the crazy stuff, and then he go swipe everybody out. So he was really like the biggest shot caller. He was the richest and the most gangster dude on the show for real, for real. But you know, his kid came in. You know that we don't want to do no. Hey, this is, <laughs> hey, Deron Bland is. Hey, Deron Bland is playing. This is his third. Is he playing on his? This is his third year. This is gonna be his third year. He'll be eligible for uh, for an extension after this season. Man, it's about to get chunky. It's about to get meaty up in here, boy. Because think about this: Mike is not gonna get paid this year. CD Mike CD's gonna get paid. CD has, has to get no paid. Choice. Mike is not. Mike is not getting paid this year. So think about this. Imagine next year when you got to sign Deron Bland and Micah Parsons all on the same defense. Hey, if you can't if you can't work it out with Deron Bland, you should trade him expeditiously because that's to be the best time. Bro, if you can't work it out with Deron Bland, you need to trade him now. Man, y'all acting like they smart, bro. <laughs> Shit. You know what they gonna do? They gonna lowball Duran Bland until he gets sick of it, and then he gonna be a free agent, and then we gonna lose. No, they, they gonna nah, I'm gonna tell you what they really gonna do. They gonna <laughs> <play time. laughs> hey, hey, come on! You already knew it. You already knew it. They gonna it, hell no. They gonna it, tag his ass. It, it hurt their heart. They could have used a tag this year. Like shit. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody gotta get it. Shit. Somebody gotta yeah, get it. Hell yeah. What yeah, they're really right, gonna right. do is I'm gonna tell you what they really gonna do. They're gonna hope that that Deron Bland balls out this year 
and that his NFL incentives don't kind of like make him feel like he has a whole lot of money. And he doesn't because he with Trevon Diggs realizes like, yeah, because, you know, these players, they get paid off NFL incentives, too. You know what I'm saying? But Trevon Diggs, one thing that I loved about Trevon Diggs is Trevon Diggs had an older brother. You know what I'm saying? He had a he, he had an older brother. Right. And his older brother was 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 a guy who was paid. So that's why I was like, I love him having an older brother because that's going to prevent him from being like, nah, bro, you ain't, you, you know what I'm saying? You're going to make sure you got to do right by these, do right by these guys. Now, I know we, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that the Cowboys should be actively, and I already know what the Cowboys are going to do with Deron Bland. They're not smart enough to, to, to try to do something like that because I'm going to tell you this right now. You could probably get a, you could probably get two first round picks for him right now. You know what I'm saying? But, come out for all pro season, the only, I was, and pick six as hell. Yeah, you get something for that, man. At least get one first. At least a first. You, get, you, you would get a lot for him. And I'm going to be honest. And, and you know the cold thing about it is? You could theoretically move on from Deron Bland, and it, it, and it wouldn't technically hurt you. You want to know why? Because you never in your life could imagine that he was going to be playing the way he was playing right now. You want to know the tone. Now we are discussing never. training good players. Dallas don't do that. You know what we do with our nah, we, don't. we either pay them or lose them. <laughs> it ain't no, it ain't no in between. Like we don't trade them and get, we don't finesse and get more picks and get in a better position. We don't behave that way. That's just not what we do. So yeah. that just shows you, our GM is terrible. Like that's I mean, all. It's, I'm, it's I'm mad. I'm mad. Just think. Of, don't think about Deron Bland, the player. Think about what he was drafted for. What was a fifth round pick. If somebody told you you could turn a fifth round pick into a first and a second, or a first and a third, or a first and, and multiple picks, like you, like man, that's some black magic. How you do that there? Like man, that's a, that's a that's a huge come up. <laughs> what you do is the art of negotiation is which is start high. So I come out and be like, hey, Duran, I got Duran Bland going for two first round picks, just like we said. I start high. And then, you know, we might make our way down to a first and a second or a first and a third. And then, you know, worst come hey. to worst, that's the first. Fun, funny story. Why didn't Trey Lance get moved? Why did the Cowboys still have three starting, three three quarterbacks in the roster right now? Why didn't Trey Lance get moved? Oh, they already picked up his money. They picked up his fifth year option. Well, they didn't pick up his fifth year option. They, they gonna, I ain't gonna lie, bro. They, they the Cowboys. Win. The Cowboys are gonna try to play this. They're gonna his, try to play his, this. His, his, his roster bonus. They picked it up. Oh, okay. I thought it. I thought it was the fifth year option. They, now they guarantee. They, they picked up his guaranteed money for the year. You know that's that's really why Michael Gallabaz got cut today because they had to make a decision on him by Saturday at four p.m. Had he had they not, they would have guaranteed him four million dollars. So they went ahead and cut Michael Gallup right now. There was a time to cut. To cut Bro, wait a minute, ATM. You you buy the computer. I know you are, cause you are always working. Like twenty four hours a day, ATM is working. I right, please, where, go find the lo- the last big trade that the Cowboys did. Like for a good player, not just the mediocre players. Like f- this, that you got a feel for a six seven Cooper. round pick. Trading for, are you talking about us trading somebody? That ain't big enough though, cause he only got a fifth. Now, Mara, I'm talking about, I'm Mara, about when we traded for him. Mara was a good player, away. though. He was yeah, a good. I'll, I'll talk about when we when we traded when we traded for him. But it also that was the, though 2018, 2017? 2018 season. That's the last. That's, that's the last a long move. time too. It's this half a decade, like almost half a decade. I, right? I think years. I was really talking whoa, about whoa. us trading our player away. So you might say it was Amara Cooper. It's, it's, it's still Amara. But I don't think I don't even. We got a, a fifth, fifth round, round pick. pick. Ain't nothing. I mean, Jared. They got more for Jared Judy than uh than Amari. See that right there. Then we already know that wasn't in good faith either. It made no sense for one, and it was malicious. Like it wasn't like okay, we got this great player, we finna finesse and then get this and that for it. No, cause listen, the only way it would have fit my criteria that I described was if we would have got a good haul back. We did it. And you know what I'm saying? We could tell it was just some miscellaneous foolishness <laughs> from the Jones. You see what I'm saying? It was miscellaneous, random, just foolishness all of a sudden. So I'm talking to you. You see what I mean? I'm talking about trading a good commodity and getting a good haul back for it. We just got finessed in the Myra Cooper trade, basically. Mm-hmm. So of when course. did we do that? When? Because look, listen, what I'm getting at is. In that scenario, your front office will be proactive at that point. 
You see what I'm saying? They would be thinking ahead of the curve. Like, hey, this guy's great. We probably can get a lot of stuff for him. Let's do it. When the last time that happened? Never. They never do it. That's malpractice. Look, some of these players, y'all, we need to quit falling in love with some of these players, even if they good. We might just be like, hey, man, check this out. You're good, but, hey, we need two cornerbacks and a defensive end. Let's trade this dude, and then we can get those players. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, we, we I mean, might need to think like that more times than not, bro. I mean, think about what the Chiefs did. The Chiefs got rid of Tyreek Hill, and they parlayed that into a Super Bowl defense. That they whole went, cornerback room came out of that trade. Yeah, because they went and got McDuffie, who turned into an all-pro slot corner. They Sneed. went. And, they went. Did they did they uh, use the draft Sneed or Sneed already? Sneed did? too. I believe Sneed ain't never like a second, third year player. Second nah, he, year player. He, he got franchise tag this year. Let me see. So he, he so he he been in there longer than that. But uh, I know they. As a matter of fact, they pass rushing. Uh, old boy. Uh, I forget the boy name. But uh, yeah, it. yeah, like yeah. they they were one of the, they were one of the thing to turn from the picks. Matter of fact, was Nick Bowden one one of the picks that they got? Might have been. Like, oh, yeah. they, they got a lot from that Tyree here. But you got to think about it. They looked at it like, bro, how much more receivers we need when we can? We got this great quarterback, we need help in other areas. You and see what I'm saying? Like, we got to stop being in so in love just because we got a good player. Sometimes you need to look at them like a come up. Like, huh, you know what? We can get three first-round picks for this dude. Get him out of here now. <laughs> you hey, know what I'm saying? Can I also say this? Even though they got rid of their wide receiver, they still went and actually tried to get better wide receiver. They didn't just make a hole and look at it like the Dallas Cowboys do. Yeah. Because remember, they they threw they they threw uh Davis Tony at it. They drafted Sky Moore. They they went and got Juju Smith Schuster. They just didn't keep the one expensive ass wide receiver. Yeah. See, that's all I'm saying. You got to think about it, man. It's listen. If your team's got more holes and then you got dealt. Cause that's when that's the situation you'll have to be in for it to make sense. You'll Ooh. have to have depth at the position, and Ooh. you'll have to have multiple voids in your in your team. That's when it makes sense. Like, okay, I can flip this position into three, four other positions and solid picks. Like that, it just makes too much sense. You, cause think about it. In the end, you'll have a better overall team opposed to just being strong at that position. It, it really it. makes sense. Would you trade Michael Parsons then? Let me see what we do with Dak. <laughs> Shit. I yeah, trade his ass then. We don't sign Dak Prescott. Everything can go. To yeah, me. I was gonna say, if you're gonna if you're gonna let Dak Prescott walk uh and eat thirty six million dollars next year, you need to blow it up anyway. You need to you need to move every player humanly possible. I'm gonna tell you right now, I ain't got no ties to no player though. Cause if you think about that. Man, listen. Okay, listen. Before everybody say we are batshit crazy for talking about Trey and Michael Parsons, think about this. What if they told you you can get four first round picks? <laughs> no, like some crazy. Well, I'd be like, hold on now. Wait a minute. Look, you know, I just imagine if I'm Jerry Jones and then I get the phone call. They like, boom, boom, boom. They hit me up. I'm like, hello? They're like, yeah, you want to trade Michael Parsons? I'm like, man, I'm just about to hit the button. They like four first round picks. My hand will stop. Like, wait a minute. Hold on. How many? <laughs> wait a minute. Now I got to think about this. Jerry you Jones, know? they might send Jer Jerry Jones to an early grade. They, they called and told him anybody, they wanted anybody on his team for four for four, uh, for four picks. They, man, around, you, they, they, they they would hold a gun to that Prescott head if somebody called for four picks for him. Like, hey, you, wave, you it, go. wave it. Wave it. Wave it. You got to go. Sign <laughs> right here. Sign right here. Gonna, like man, gonna, four first gonna, round picks is insane, bro. They gonna give this. They gonna give this. They ain't gonna give this man a, a choice. They they gonna put him in a room with some mafia niggas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, it's certain <laughs> things. Like, I mean, listen, it's it's almost just as crazy to trade Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill, one of the best wide receivers in football for years. To this day, to this day, <laughs> and we up here acting like Micah is untouchable. Like he one of the best defensive ends. He is, but it's it, it's just the sun. It's just as crazy. They did it anyway. You see what I'm saying? So it don't let we we gotta stop acting like nothing can. You know what I'm saying? Nobody is crazy. Like nobody is touchable, untouchable. Hold on, Shout King out to G. King G. 
was been a member for four months. He a trap star. Salute, man. Salute, man. I appreciate you, sir. Yes, Hold sir. On. My hey. boy got a message though. He said, "I'm here in the conversation. I'm wondering, realistically, who would you trade from this team that will give you good value?" I mean, listen, I don't necessarily want to trade these people because, you know, I'm trying to win a championship, trading away your best parts, take you further away from that. But if they come out and say, hey, we're, we're rebuilding, you can trade every damn body. i say this. The only player that I win, and I like this player too, but I, I win, I win, I win really lose too much sleep over Deron Bland because we know he was a fifth-round pick. This don't even supposed to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, this don't even supposed to happen. And then what if he just on this crazy, crazy run and then fall back to reality? Like, uh, you know what I'm saying? And you you could have had two, three first round picks for. Him. Like, I would have been like, man, nah, that's a hard decision. From coming up from a fifth round pick, I think you might just have to take that. And hey, this is the only pushback that is, that is agreeable. What if we draft some? What do we draft? What do we draft? Uh, what's the what's the boy? What, what we draft Taco Charlie with the first round pick that we oh, uh, man. that we I'll got from Mike? Of this taco. <laughs> what what are we? What, what, so. what what if they come out and they so far like Miles and Smith? And I ain't saying that he can't be good. He ain't he ain't been good up to this point. So that that is always the risk though. Like it you, is. So hey, that is, that is always the risk. You get a bunch of picks. You also got to make a bunch of good picks with the draft picks. True, true. It's it's a two handed job. You know what I'm saying? I get that. But mm-hmm. it still don't mean it won't work either. You trust your draft people now? Uh, do we? Yeah, I do. At least to a certain degree. I think they was reaching last year, bro. They they, they felt like they needed this. They was, bro. That was not a regular draft for Man, us. Man, hold on. They 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 feeling like that this year. I might have to kill somebody. Bro, that was not a regular. That what they said. I, I honestly believe the Cowboys thought that their team was so solid that they didn't actually need nothing for real. The only need that I feel like they felt like they needed was the Mozzie pick. And everything else, I felt like they probably was like, man, this kind of luxury. Like, we got linebackers. We got running backs. We, don't, we got Tony Pollard. We don't need no running back. We can get Deuce Vaughn in the six. Like, we got Jake Ferguson. I mean, I want a tight end anyway. Like, that's a luxury pick. Like, I don't think they was drafting for, like, last year. They weren't drafting for an instant impact. They wasn't. And that was a mistake because we needed something from them rookies. Hey, we so did, especially my, if you're going to play them. Go my ahead. Boy, I was just going to say Danny would ask what's the topic. We're talking about uh, we're ta- we're talking about fake scenarios in, in, uh, in trades. Like, would we trade to run Bland? Because remember, we might not be able to uh, to re-sign him if he has another All-Pro season. He might be too expensive. So, would you trade him before you, before you, while he still has value before letting him walk and getting nothing? Right? Yeah. We did that with with Doran's Armstrong. Like, there was a market for him. We could have traded him, and now he done went to our to our rivals in the division, and we got absolutely nothing for it. Same thing with some some of these other players. So, we we're just talking about some. Uh, you know, some hypothetical uh, scenarios that if we would trade players. Like, would we trade a Michael Parsons and we knew we were going to blow it up? Should we trade to run Bland regardless because we know he'll probably not get the money he deserves in Dallas? True. Shout out to Mr. Bobby Ellis for becoming a, a trap member, man. A, a member of the trap. I appreciate you, sir. I really do. Thank Salute. you. Salute. Salute to my boy, man. But like and- you said, though, think about this, though. It's really risky either way. Because, listen, we got plenty of positions that we need to fill on this team. So, there's one risk. One risk is, okay, we're going to stick to our – we're going to stick out to our guns and just draft where we at and hope that we hit on every player. People don't – I don't see how y'all don't see that as risky, too. Because, look, the end result is we need players to play good at these positions. If you just sit up here picking wherever you pick it, what's the chances of you hitting on all these picks? Like, it, that's great. that's stupid. Like it's really dumb. Honestly, it, it it's it's a way higher likelihood that that don't happen. You see what I'm saying? Right. And hypothetically, I mean, we're going by hypotheticals too, Danny. Like that would be the white whale that would get you the most because he's an All Pro quarterback that's on on the right side of 35. You know what I'm okay, saying? Like, well, let's trade that, and then we can get a bunch of first round picks. But what's what's more risky 
drafting a first round quarterback or almost any other position? Dra- drafting a first round quarterback. So and that's why and, I went and, mess and, with hey, my quarterback. And listen, JVB boy, we know he has a no trade clause. That's why we're talking about hypotheticals. We know he can't be traded unless he wants to. But let's say yeah. Dak gets tired of Jerry Jones bullshitting and he call his agent and say, hey man, get me the fuck out of here. I'm tired of this old nigga. I'm so ready to if, sign. So yeah, let's let's say let's say that happens. Let's say Dak wants to be traded. You could get you can get what you can get a lot for Dak Prescott, even you know, even with him this, determining where he goes. You can still get get like two first, two first or three first. You know what I'm saying? We just talk about hypotheticals. I'm not saying you should trade, but listen, right now I want to win a championship. So I want to keep everybody for right now. I want the run bland to be on the on the team for 2024. I want Dak on the team, Michael Parsons, C D. I want everybody to be on the team. I'm just talking about some, some wild ass scenarios. That's all I'm talking about. True. We just trying to see how we can make this team better. Now I gave you one. Drafting what we normally drafted. Now think about this. What if you can make a trade and get better draft picks on top of the ones that you have? I Which mean, like one? Did. Don't you think that'll raise your chances of improving your team? I mean, you just Minnesota did, didn't you? huh? Did you see what Minnesota did? What they do? Let me show you. Let me pull it up real quick. They they traded back into the first round, so they got two first round picks now. Wow. Yeah. You did, How they you do that? They they uh they traded with uh the Houston Texans. Yeah, they traded with the Houston Texans. So let me go and pull up the uh, the actual. I think it's on like uh, Ian Rappaport shit. Let me say, I'm gonna go to Ian Rappaport page because I know it's on there somewhere. Yeah, uh, Jacob Lemeister says Dan Quinn was able to flip bomb Sam Howell for his fifth pick and a third round pick. Imagine what Dak's value is. Wow, everything. Wow. Who would it be? Who the Vikings quarterback now? Nobody. That's why they that's they got two first round picks. I'm pretty sure it'd be like Michael Penix or something by the time the season starts. Penix, Penix, they got Penix dropping to the second round. I think people kind of crazy about that. Yeah, I think he's better than JJ McCarthy. And they got JJ McCarthy like he's a bona fide top top ten pick. I'm like. Where? Why? How? They be wrong when? about stuff like this all the time. I told them I mean, they shouldn't be picking no Mitchell Trubisky there high. I said that was stupid. And then what, what happened? I mean, look at Kenny Pickett. Kenny, Kenny Pickett, Pickett got they tra- said he was the best thing since sliced bread. That man got tra- that man got traded to the Eagles to be a backup. All right, so there here it goes. So this is the trade. Wink, wink. The Vikings and Texas have agreed to terms on a major deal in advance of the draft per Tom Pelissoro landing Minnesota another first. Minnesota gets number 23 and number 232. Houston gets number 42, 188, and the 2025 second rounder. So they traded a second round pick, a future second round pick, and a fourth round pick to get a first round pick. That's dope. That's dope. So now they got two first round picks. They got pick number eleven, and they got pick number twenty three. So guess what they could do? Because they're picking ahead of us, they could deplete that offensive line, uh, that offensive line room that we we're looking at. That off, the offensive line draft picks we we're looking at. They could get the, they could get their quarterback and get an offensive line. They get their quarterback and get them get themselves a wide receiver if they wanted to. That's right? probably what they're gonna do. Minnesota love them. Well, now nah, they got receivers. They do. They're gonna get an offensive. They're gonna get a quarterback in the O line. I mean, hey, are we hundred percent sure on that? Because I, I haven't seen Justin Jefferson sign a contract yet. Well, him and um, they got Jordan Addison last year. He balled and out. One, one. And you're gonna and you're gonna need another one. Like I'm saying, if just if they if Justin Jefferson is gonna is, is not gonna sign his deal, then uh, they gonna they might have to move his ass. True. So it could it could be offensive line wide receiver. We don't know. We, listen, we don't trade good players, so we, you know it, it's out of, out of my mindset to think about it. But they could move on from him. He don't want to be there. But listen, I don't. They saying he wasn't happy. They let Kirk Cousins leave. Why? 
That's his quarterback. Why the hell he want to sign? He shouldn't be happy. Why the hell he want to sign up and play? They got Sam Donald on the team. That man ain't trying to play with no goddamn Sam Donald. <laughs> that man regarded as the best receiver in the league, and now he only ain't got a quarterback. That's crazy. Man. Yeah, it was reported he turned down $30 million already. So, man, like he ain't happy. He probably don't want to be there th- at this point. True. Well, I'm finna have to get on up out of here, man. I gotta go put some food in my belly some kind of way. I ain't ate nothing. Bro, same here, man. Same here. I, I need to charge this phone. I need to find some food. Fat bastard I, vibes. Get in my belly. Man, on, <laughs> for real, for real. Yeah. But, uh, man, I appreciate everybody coming through, riding through, sliding through. You already knew how we do. You know what I'm saying? Bars. But let's get it, man. Hey, hopefully the Cowboys finna do something else. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully they finna make a move. Uh, it ain't many, you know, noteworthy people out there to, you know, start a start a, a revolution up here to change our minds. It ain't many players like that. But uh, we'll have to figure it out. Mm-hmm. And indeed. But hey, man, landlord, let them folks know where they can find you at, bro. Yes, sir, man. Landlord from Alabama with the same handle on our social media. I'll probably be live tomorrow around maybe around 11, my old time, or maybe 5, or maybe even both. We might do it both. But turn your notifications on. You know what I'm saying? Holla at your boy. Indeed. And it's your boy, Henny Moore, reporting live from the liquor store. Hey, man, we around the corner from that 2000 sub, Mark, man. I'm at 1985. So if you ain't already came over and joined the liquor store, go to HTM Sports on YouTube and hit that sub button. It'll be greatly appreciated hitting this uh, this new milestone. And we're just going to keep growing, prospering, and doing great things over here in the liquor store, man. And, I need hey, one of y'all to sub right now so it can be my year, my birth year, okay? 1986. That's what we need over here. <laughs> that's crazy. You got the same age as Clay's Campbell. Yeah, I'm an old man. I'm older than him. He said, "You say he's thirty-three? Nah, nah I didn't he, say Kalei. He's thirty-seven. He thirty-seven. Yeah, Campbell yeah. thirty-seven. Yeah, he my same age. Yeah, so Kalei's Campbell is is ancient. Oh, for real? That's yeah. that's how you feel. Yeah, especially everybody yeah. say everybody listen. Every young person calls somebody old, and then next thing they know, when they that age, they be like, "Dang, that's not really old." <laughs> it happens, you know what I'm saying? Keep living, young buck. You know what I'm saying? You've been having Similac behind your ears for a long time. It's going to eventually dry up, sir. It will. But congratulations. <laughs> hey, man, I'm just I'm just building my boy, man. I really was talking about the latest Campbell being H for a football player. Nah, you know, 37. So 37 old, I'm old too, so I don't even, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. I mean, damn, you I'm ain't suited saying. up. You you ain't you ain't out here. How you know I ain't suiting up? How you know I'm still? Do, I told you, you. You do too many damn shows to be suiting up. They, just, <laughs> they, 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 need, they need to cut your ass. You I told up. you I can run one good route. It might be a touchdown. <laughs> That's it though. That's it. I'm gonna definitely catch the ball. That's a promise. Like I will catch the ball. You ain't gotta worry about that. I don't know if I'm gonna get separation, but I will make the catch. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh, no, you good. You good. I retire man. after that one catch. I'm retiring. You know what I'm saying? But man, mm-hmm. y'all come through and holler at your boy, man. Hit them likes, man. Hit them shares, and make sure y'all keep supporting, man. We appreciate y'all. Indeed. What West Coast hey, say, HTM? Never look down because the star is up, man. Peace. Peace. Oh, hold on, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Drove said that man came in when they had leather helmets. <laughs> <laughs> Black and oh. white footage. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> All right, we can All leave right. red this time, man. I'm all the job. All right. <laughs>